before starting iter modeling you have to set the units okay so there you can see one option it a uh, unit and that uh, is not coming okay so show unit form and here you see uh, you can see the unit by default which is given in the software for different terms here you can see the unit uh, sorry here you can reset the units whichever you want for example you want to see the dimension in terms of meter okay so here you see displacement unit is given in meter only okay now if you want to reset it to something other some other forms you can uh, do this here okay so i do not want to change this uh, i want to keep it in meter only then similarly you have so many terms here you can just go through this one displacement we said we want to keep in mm but if you want to change it to other form you can do this one here similarly forces we want to track in kilonewton only but if you want to change it to something other form like newton you can do i would like to keep it in kilonewton only then stresses it is mpa fine stiffness kilonewton per meter fine then uh, time related acceleration you can see meter per second square that is also fine okay and uh, yeah this is uh, some of the things we want to track and remaining things uh, we do not need much okay but if you want to change anything you are free to go here so let me close this then starts our first step in modeling which is definition of our materials okay so you can go to define material properties here i have some materials already defined but if you want to define anything else so you can go by this option add new material and here we will select india and i want to define now concrete so let me choose the concrete option and uh, it will be according to indian standard and grade i would like to take m25 okay and uh, in the last class also i have explain this one here you see the modulus of elasticity as 25000 mpa so this you know uh, there is one formula in our is 456 the modulus of elasticity of concrete is 5000 root under fck so if you apply that formula you will get this one okay and uh, the poisson's ratio for concrete is usually 0.2 so this i will not change here and uh, the design properties here let us check so this is the grade of concrete we have applied 25 sorry we have taken 25 mpa grade so it is 25 here and now it is actually nominal property okay so this you can change according to your purpose if you want to do some performance based design you'll be expecting the uh, expected properties here and the expected properties you know how to calculate fck plus 1.64 into sigma whole multiplied by the uh, safety factors 0.8 uh, 0.85 something like that okay so let us now keep this is uh, this to the nominal properties only and uh, this is the nonlinear properties here you will see the stress strain curve we have taken 25 so you can see the peak strength is 25 okay and the strain corresponding to this one you all you know that that will be 0.002 okay and maximum strain how much we have taken up to 0.005 you can change this if you want to keep it to 0.004 or 0.0035 doesn't matter okay 0.005 is also fine okay so this things uh, you will not understand if i explain now so as uh, this will be discussed in the class so when once it is completed we will get back to this point once again okay so like this you can define the material so i have defined the concrete let me define the steel also sorry for rebar you have to select this one rebar okay so hy is the 415 is there 500 is there 550 is there okay let me take 415 again here you see this is the unit weight of steel this is the modulus of elasticity of steel 
and uh, thermal expansion with this you know and uh, yeah these are the strength yield strength of steel 415 we have taken so this will be 415 again this will be the nominal property not expected okay and the tensile strength minimum tensile strength 485 and here is the expected properties are also given this is the nominal this is the expected in case of steel it is given okay so yield strength nominal yield strength expected ultimate strength nominal ultimate strength expected okay and again here you see the stress strain curve for steel okay and uh, here ultimate strain capacity this will change to 0.145 this is the recommendation by our board okay minimum 14.5% should be there okay so similarly actually i have already some materials here 415 is already there 500 is also there so just to show you again i have done this one this actually do not need so let me delete this one we already have this okay so for this uh, lecture i'll use m25 concrete and uh, 500 steel for 500 grade steel for main steel and 415 grade for uh, stirrups and lateral ties okay I think this you have already, right? All of you? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, what are the specifications given here? Preliminary beam section is 300 by 450. <laughs> Frame section. Here I have some of the sections already defined. Okay. Concrete rectangular. Let me name this as preliminary. B a hundred by four fifty, and here you should select the material M twenty five we have taken, and uh, this depth will be four fifty, and this will be three hundred. Okay, and this will keep as default will not change for now. Okay. And reinforcement here you have to select this to beam and uh, longitudinal bar will be 500 and transverse will be 450 and uh, this cover will keep as 40. Okay, this thing I'm not explaining because I am assuming that you know already all these things. Okay, then let us define one column section. Column, I think, I have given 400 by 400. So, this is already column selected. And this, this I have discussed in the last class. You have to always keep reinforcement to be designed when you are designing in the software okay at least in the first attempt but later on when you want to check your model whether it is correct or not correct that time you can go for this option okay this i'll discuss once again but initially for the first time when you are designing you have to keep to this point this option okay so once you select this option this parameters doesn't matter if you do not modify also if you do not define also no problem 
venue option is selected for this okay so i'll skip this part this means we are allowing the software to design the reinforcement whatever is required software will design uh, software will decide itself okay we do not have to give anything here so that's why this option so we have one beam section and one column section actually we i have lot of the sections here but th because this is one of the existing model that's why but uh, i'll consider only this and this for this lecture okay <clears throat> okay so since we have sorry uh, let me define one slab also although we are not going to use the slab but let me show how to define the slab okay you have one by default two slab sections here so let me name this as slab 150 mm it means i am taking the thickness of the slab is 150 so again here whatever grade you want you can select here and here you have to choose some options what type of element you want okay with you want shell element if it is shell whether it is thin shell or thick shell or membrane or layered okay i think you have studied all these things in your fem right so i will not go into details of this so usually we consider thin shell for slabs okay so thin shell and here type is slab and this will be 150 cm because our thickness is 150 considered okay. okay so now we have defined all the sections let us now model our structure our structure will be where is that yeah so this is the plan we have in the x direction we have three base in the y direction we have five base sorry four base and the, the number of stories n okay and the span is 4 meter 3 meter 4 meter for x direction and all five for y direction okay so before going to that one let me edit storage and grid system okay add new grid system g2 first grid level uh, let to run it bottom to top okay number of grids here you can see global x 0 meter global y this is the coordinate system number of grid in x direction we want 4 for 3 span number of grid in y direction we want 5 for 4 span spacing in grid 4 meter in x direction 5 meter in y direction okay okay So now you now you see we have grid system defined in x direction all four meter but in our plan the middle uh, span is three meter so what we'll do we'll go to modify this grid modify show story data modify show grid system here you can modify the grid system. in x direction you see for, uh, first span is 0 to 4 that is 4 meter then 4 to 8 that is again 4 meter so what you do this instead of 8 you modify it to 7 okay and uh, so next one will be 11 because we have again 4 meter 
in the y direction if you see in our plan we have 5 meter all 5 meter okay so what you have to do 0 to 5 that is 5 meter then 5 to 10 that is 5 meter then 10 to 15 that is again 5 meter but here it is only 3 span here you can see but we have 5 uh, four span total so add one more okay now you see 5 meter 5 meter 5 meter 5 meter so it is defined and the number of st stories here you see you can modify or change the stories here here total five stories we have and the story height is 3 meter i think uh, in the question also it is given as 3 meter only yeah story height is 3 meter and plinth height is 2 meter so plinth height is already 2 meter and remaining 3 meter what we will do we'll add the stories here add stories keep existing story height so this will use story height 1 number of added stories let me take 5 insert above story so here you can define above which story you want to add the new stories okay so since uh, we already have five stories so let me select this one five so it will go above the fifth story okay and the properties will be considered from this story okay this also you can choose okay now see total 10 stories we have and this you can modify according to your um, how many one now let us assign the sections first this option you can see quick draw beam and so many other options are also there okay you can explore all these things i'll use this option okay this is easy because sir and here is plinth height sir actually plinth height is also mentioned in the sheet you shared sorry plinth height ha ah, plinth two height is 2 meter 2 meter right yeah that is 2 mm -hmm. meter only we have also defined 2 meter where is that sir while providing plinth height in software it is not taking okay why let me check in mine it is taking see are you not getting this as 2 meter this bottom one hello Yes, sir. We are we are not getting the plane height is two meter. Then you go to this option again. Where is that? Edit stories and grid system, and go to this option once again and check whether it is two here or not. No. It is how, not. How here. much? it's not here means it is not written there in your model yes then you can write it this is the this is for you you can define whatever you want okay so you can write this as plain i am doing okay. in our, my model you, because this was one of the existing model that's why it is written i have written but in your case it will not be there something else will be there you can uh, rewrite this one according to your needs okay could you do that let me know once you do this
Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Anyone else who are having the similar doubts or something else, something other than this? Okay, sorry, it's my mistake actually. I should have told this one. This was already defined, and so I forgot to tell. This you can define according to your needs. Okay, initially something by default will be there, and this two will not be there. This you have to edit. Okay, sorry for that. Now see, first uh, we'll define the beams. So once you want to define beam, we have to go to the plan. Okay, and I'll start from the plinth plinth uh, level. and here see either you can go by individual story or you can define all stories together so all stories together will be very much useful when you have the similar kind of beam section for all the stories okay suppose you have different types of sections so you have to go to individual stories wherever the sections are changing you have to define it separately okay since in this case we have only one section defined so i will define all stories together okay so uh, all stories are selected here and uh, now go to this option quick draw beam and here you see here you have to define which beam section you want to assign actually and uh, we have defined beam 300 by 400 preliminary beam 300 by 450 actually and it is continuous okay what you can do now it is selected and either you can define one beam at a time or you can just drag for the whole model together so all the beams will be assigned together okay so this is easiest option here because we have only one section so let me uh, choose this one dragging the whole model together okay it is done now if you see in the whole model you can see for all the stories for all the stories our beam sections are defined now one more thing you can do if suppose uh, at some particular levels for example fifth or sixth stories you have some other beam sections okay so you can go to particularly that of that point and you can modify this one for example i want to for example i have some other sections at story 8 so let me apply to story 8 now let us take this this beam is something other than 300 by 450 so what i will do i will select this beam and go to assign frame and section property here you have whatever sections you want to assign for example i want to assign 350 by 550 so what i will do i will select this 350 by 550 then apply so by doing this you can modify this once again after defining initially okay so this also you can do okay fine next let us uh, define the columns for defining the column i need elevation so any of the elevation you can go and select the columns again all stories i have selected so if i define for one level also i am defining between the plinth and base but it will be done for all the stories okay since i have uh, selected this all stories this we have done for one elevation then go to the next grid line again do the same things next just repeat the process until you complete for the entire model
i think we are done you can see in the 3d view okay so you have defined for all the sorry gone i don't know how give me 5 minutes let me complete this process that is deleted i don't know how
okay sorry for the disturbance so better to save after few minutes okay actually i did not save so it gone away i'm saving now now we have defined beams and columns and uh, for this model we will not uh, model the slab explicitly instead we will do the load of slab we will transfer this to the beams and uh, yeah transfer the, the load of slabs to the beams okay by using yield line concept okay this i'll explain let me first define the support system for that so for defining the support you have to go to the base okay and uh, select all the joints you can just keep your cursor anywhere then then drag it okay so all the joints are selected and at this point see here you have to choose only one story okay do not forget this one otherwise what happens if you select all the stories your support will be defined at all the story levels which is very much actually not correct okay so don't forget this option to select at this moment before defining your support assign joint history okay we are assuming that we have fixed support for all the columns and apply okay now you have support defined you can see okay next what we have so okay, defining rigid diaphragm yeah so these things i'll explain what is rigid diaphragm let me first define this one hello sir yes sir is a record ho raha hai na हाँ रिकॉर्ड हो रहा है लेकिन ये जो सॉफ्टवेयर है ना इसका अभी ये ट्रायल पीरियड है तो ये है ना दस मिनट तक हो रहा है उसके बाद ऑफ हो रहा है फिर तो मेरे पास दस मिनट दस मिनट का रिकॉर्ड है ओके तो नेक्स्ट क्लास से है ना हम पूरा रिकॉर्ड एक ही लेक्चर में कर लेंगे ओके सर अगर आपके पास कोई सॉफ्टवेयर है तो, तो उसको भी ऑन कर दो अगर किसी किसी के पास होगा तो okay so next option is to decide uh, sorry to define the diaphragm here you see already two diaphragms are defined let me define one more add new diaphragm and the name let us name it as d2 only and we will select the rigid diaphragm and okay let me discuss briefly what is rigid diaphragm so let us consider this as a building and you are applying the lateral deformation sorry lateral displacement okay so in case of rigid diaphragm what we ensure if this is a slab okay so we ensure that this will not be bending in plane okay what it means the displacement at this point will be equal to the displacement at this point will be equal to the displacement at this point will be equal to the displacement at this point it means it do not have any axial deformation it is actually rigid okay so entire floor is moving together so this is 
the assurance we are giving by defining the rigid diagram. So next, what we have? Mass source defining load pattern. Before doing the remaining parts, let us first uh, assign the loads. Okay, for the assigning okay. the load, we need yes. Yeah, any doubt? Sir, can you repeat the step of support assignment? Okay. Uh, to assign the support, can you repeat that? Okay, okay. So for defining the support, go to the select this plan option and go to the base. Okay. Then select all the joints and go to assign join this string. So after selecting the joints, assign join this string. And here see different types of supports are given and options are also given. So I am choosing the fixed support means the translation in all the th three directions are prevented and rotation in all the three directions are prevented. Okay, so this is the fixed support. Then apply. But suppose you have some other support conditions. So accordingly, you can choose these options from. Okay, but for this case, we are taking only the fixed support. Then apply. That's all. Now see, once the support is defined, how to understand whether it is uh, assigned or not. Okay. So once the support is assigned, you'll see one plus sign is shown here. Okay. But before assigning the support, it will not be like this. It will some something triangular shape will be there, but not this shape. Okay. So by seeing this one, you can understand support is assigned when it is shown as a plus sign. Okay. This is for fixed support. I'm not talking about the other support for different support, different symbols will be given. But for fixed support, it is like a plus sign as you can see here. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. Okay, next. We have defined the sections. We have assigned the sections. Now, next point. What we have? load patterns so let us define the load patterns i'll delete all these things because you'll not get this so that you can understand better okay so this will be there okay initially this will be there dead once you come to this option load pattern you will have this dead you do not have to define it will automatically be defined what it means whatever beam and columns or some other uh, sections you have defined the software considered automatically the dead load of all this whatever you have assigned earlier okay so because of this they have they give one option uh, in terms of dead load okay and here you see self weight multiplier is considered as one. It means the self weight of the defined sections is already considered. That's why it is one. Okay. Now uh, remaining things which are not defined, this will do. So and here you name the load. Dead load is already defined. What we can write live load, we can write live floor we can write it means this is the live load uh, to be applied on the internal floors not at the roof level okay so for roof level we will define separately and this self weight multiplier you have to use as zero it means it is not defined by the software initially we have to define it manually okay so self weight multiplier will be zero next Life roof we can give. This is also zero because it is also not defined by the software. 
then you can give the all loads so the type of loading is also be dead load in all cases live floor or live roof sorry type in second column ha ah, this one second column second type column of this one type dead load yes dead and live oh sorry 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 yeah this you have to change this is live okay then uh, this also so that's our mountain This is live. It is not coming. Okay. Yeah. So here also, there one more option is the live roof. That also you can choose. Okay. But no problem if you take simply live. No problem since it is roof. So specifically we will define this live. Uh, sorry, roof live. Okay. Thanks for the correction. So next, we can define one loads. So for one loads, either you can go for this one, superimposed dead, yeah, super dead. These options you can choose, okay. And this also zero, add, and uh, you can have slab loads because we have not modeled the slab. so we have to define this slab loads so this is also super dead hello sir and yes what is that self weight multiplier self weight multiplier uh, one means this is already considered by the software means uh, if you take the case of beams and columns okay so this we have already defined in the software and from the details what we have given given software has already calculated the dead load we do not have to define it manually okay so that is the meaning of that self load self weight multiplier one now suppose i give i give one for this one suppose for the second option i give one and i modify this one it means the software now is understanding that live load is also considered in the model okay but it is not correct because we have not yet defined the live load so software will consider that it is uh, applied so whatever you apply later on that will not be considered by the software okay so this is not the correct option here we will give zero it means we have not defined and so we have not assigned in any way the software do not have the data of that we have to define all these things manually okay okay sir thank you then after slab load what else we can have floor finish we can have floor finish and uh, this is also coming under super dead so it will be zero anything else yeah you can define whatever load terms you have you can define okay then one more uh, seism seismic load also we can define eq x linear here you can choose this one seismic and uh, seismic code you can choose as is 18932016 2016 is it there ये खत्म करके आता हूँ अच्छा टेस्टिंग के लिए ना आप बोल रहे थे ना कल करेंगे मुझे टाइम मिला तो मिला तो दिखा दिया अभी तो रिएक्शन ले रहे हो हां तो ले लो ठीक कल करते हैं कल फिर इसी टाइम करते हैं ठीक अभी आप पढ़ा रहे हो हां ठीक ओके सो सिमिलरली यू कैन डिफाई आर्क द आर्क क्विक लोड्स आल्सो एंड इफ यू हैव सम अदर लोड्स सो यू कैन इन अ सिमिलर वे यू कैन डिफाइन ऑल दिस थिंग्स ओके देन डिफाइन द लोड केसेस one more thing let me check sorry let me show you here only 
in earthquake load when you define okay you have to modify this one here you see uh, the torsional eccentricity or accidental eccentricity you have already learned in your erd and uh, here are the options you can choose okay since this load is in x direction so what you will do we will consider the uh, eccentricity in x direction okay and by this option you can choose the accidental eccentricity also okay but if you do not click on this option so it will consider only the regular eccentricity not the accidental one okay so since it is important we will consider this also and the seismic zone factor we are considering for the zone 5 so it will be 0.36 zone factor and uh, soil type we are considering medium so it is soil type sir, 2 sir x direction minus eccentricity we will not consider yeah you can consider no problem plus or minus you can consider and the importance factor we are considering the residential building with less than 200% to be allowed in the building so we have the we have the important factor 1 according to the code so this you can check in the code for different types of structure the important factors are different okay so for this case we are considering 1 and uh, response reduction factor is considered as 5 it means our structure will be the ductile special moment resisting frame structure and the time period c here three options you have okay one is program calculated one is user defined one is approximate okay so we will consider this one program calculated if you want you can use this one also here what you can do the formula which is given in the code use that one calculate the time period and put here okay but we will not use this option we will go by this option okay similarly you can modify the options for y direction also so now unclick this for x directions and uh, remaining things i think it will be same yeah next define the load cases okay so whatever Hello, we have def yes Uh, while defining the uh, x uh, eccentricity in x and y direction for seismic loading uh -huh. how should we know that eccentricity in uh, x direction and y direction is what is what it is sorry i didn't get can you repeat jo hum eccentricity define kar rahe hain x and y direction mein for seismic loading ha uh -huh. wo hame kaise pata chalega ki itna hai ya utna hai pehle se hi no 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 that we have not given we have just given the option so that software can consider this one while analyzing okay we have not okay. defined how much eccentricity software so will calculate just, it automatically yeah it will calculate but if you want to calculate you have to do it manually and you have to cross check whether the uh, result given by the software is correct or not okay. okay now i have just allowed the software to consider that option okay Uh, okay so this thing was defined earlier i'll delete this one okay so now see this many things we have defined in the load terms and uh, it has all automatically updated here in the load cases okay so along with this uh, some other things also we have to define for example in load case i want to uh, define the response spectrum case okay i'll explain uh, what is that response spectrum case first let me define response spectrum in x direction then load pattern will go by the acceleration and uh, in the x direction and this will be the response spectrum okay 
and here okay i have to show one more thing before defining the response spectrum you have to go to function and response spectrum here it is already defined so i'll show once again you have to choose the code here is 1893/2016 then add new function and here you can define the response spectrum okay let me define our es response spectrum 1893 okay damping ratio by default is 0.05 we are considering this one and zone 5 Uh, seismic zone factor 0.36 importance factor 1 soil type medium and response reduction factor 5 okay so once you give these details your response spectrum is already defined here you can see okay now you see uh, the it is given period versus the acceleration and if you see the acceleration at 0 is 0.036 okay so by seeing this one can you tell in what unit terms it is given 0.036 in terms of g in terms of g in terms of g if it is given it should have been 0.36 not 0.036 right am i correct if it is given in g our zone factor is 0.36 so at zero period the acceleration should be 0.36 right hello see this is the one which i have already defined earlier response spectrum same code i have just uh, means it was defined earlier i show you if it is given in terms of g in case of medium soil i am giving here you can see the acceleration is given as 0.36 which is the zone factor at zero period you know if you go to the code here you see this figure is for the response spectrum method and i am considering the soil type 2 okay so you have to follow the middle curve now you see at zero period when the period of the structure is zero sa by g is 1 okay now if you consider the acceleration z by 2 into i by r into sa by g so sa by g is 1 then you have z by 2 into i by r so ignore r and uh, divided by 2 it means you have said okay what i mean to say is you have z by 2 into i by r into s by g okay so this factor s by g is given as 1 at zero period and z is 0.36 okay so if you ignore the remaining terms this much if you ignore how much you should get 0.36 right is it clear say something here hello let me know if you have any doubt okay
what software is considering it is considering 0.36 divided by 2 into i we have given as 1 r is given as 5 okay then this multiplied by s by g is 1 sorry at 0 period it is 1 now if you calculate this one you will get 0 0.036 Okay, it means software is considered I and R in the response spectrum definition. So that you should remember, not this one, if you want to define the new function. Okay, so you choose the code here and go to add new function, give some name. Response spectrum 1893, Camping ratio is this one and uh, importance factor is this soil type is 2 response reduction factor is 5 now see it is considering 0 0.036 it means it has considered this one divided by 2 and response reduction factor of 5 okay remember this one this once again we are going to use in the load case uh, option okay so keep it in mind load case and So this, as I told, this will be there from the load pattern, what you have defined, it will be automatically updated here. And now additionally, we have to define the response spectrum case. So response spectrum along X direction. And here you have to choose the response spectrum option. And here add acceleration in Y direction, sorry, uh, one means X direction. And function you have to define uh, whatever you want to define so this one I'll choose and this scale factor okay this you have to enter manually now how to decide this scale factor is first you should know what the response spectrum term what the unit of response spectrum as you have seen it was 0.036 this one it means this one z by 2 into i by r into s by g so this much is already considered by the software this whole term is considered by the software okay. only thing missing is can anyone tell which is missing Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Sir, 9.81 is missing. Yes. So once you multiply 9.81, so unit will be converted to meter per second square, right? So it is by default given as 9.81. You do not have to modify this one. But suppose your unit of response spectrum is something other than this one. Instead of 0 0.036, suppose you have 0 0.36. So that time means that uh, divided by 2 and uh, response reduction factor of 5 is not considered. So that time you have to consider this also while defining this response spectrum here. Okay, so remember this one. You may have confusion there. 
and uh, let me know if you have any doubt while defining anything okay so similarly we will define the response spectrum in y direction also response spectrum in y and choose the response spectrum add and here you have to choose u2 okay and uh, this one response spectrum by default it is given as this factor so you do not have to change but suppose it is something other than this so you have to calculate accordingly and you have to enter here okay since only g is missing so we are giving the value of g and once again it depends on the unit system of your uh, model etab model here i have shown right how to set the unit so there it is in meter per second square that's why i am considering 9.81 but suppose it was uh, meter per mm per second square or something else so according to that one you have to change this one sometimes it will be if you your uh, unit of length is in mm so it will become 9810 something okay so that also you have to remember hello sir yes sir ye scale factor ka kaam kya hai idhar स्केल फैक्टर का काम मींस सी इन टोटल अल्टीमेटली यू वांट टू गेट द फोर्स राइट यू वांट टू कैलकुलेट द फोर्स नाउ सपोज आई वांट टू कैलकुलेट द बेस शेयर v सो यू हैव द सेस्मिक कोएफिशिएंट मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द सेस्मिक वेट राइट यस सो दिस सेस्मिक कोएफिशिएंट इज दिस वन z by 2 into i by r into s by g राइट यस सो our software is uh, considering this much when we define the response spectrum this much is already considered mm -hmm. but along with that g uh, this g g term is missing this has yes. not been considered by the software that's why we are giving this additional factor which is not considered in the software okay so this is the importance of this uh, let me show once again Here you see this 9.81, 9.8066 yes. means it is 9.81 means the value of g, right? Okay. okay. So this much was not considered by the software when you defined this response spectrum function. You remember okay. this one? There we defined in the function mm -hmm. that has. Let me show once again. this function we have defined and here you see at zero period your uh, response spectrum coordinate is 0.036 yes. that means it has considered all the things except g okay okay so this you have to identify what is considered in the software in this version of etab it is 0.036 but in some other version you may have 0.36 not 0.036 by default okay so you have to identify what is considered actually in the software and if anything is missing that you have to give manually in the uh, scale factor point so scale factor uh, where you want to, you have to enter there you have to edit okay okay this is very much important if you do any mistake here so your entire result will go wrong okay so understand this very carefully so that you do not do any mistake here hello sir yes uh, why we are defining response spectrum in a load case details ha uh -huh. why we are defining this okay why you are is not the sorry i didn't get your last question response spectrum is not the what uh, why we are defining response spectrum in the load case details is it it is not the load na no? yeah this is also load right this is seismic load response spectrum why you you uh, do the earthquake resistant design you apply the earthquake load and you analyze the structure for that right mm -hmm. so how do you define that earthquake load there are two option one is equivalent static method one is response spectrum method okay when you design the structure according to our code code has given two option either you can go by equivalent static method and or you can go by response spectrum method so that response spectrum means it is some kind of load that is the representation of earthquake load okay so this Then is also some kind of eqx linear what does that define yeah yeah that i
discuss that i have not yet discussed okay so this you understood this is one type of load right this much you understood okay ha huh, sir okay now see uh, i have defined two earthquake load cases for each direction one is equx linear one is response spectrum x so these two are earthquake loads only similarly for y direction also i have defined okay so when i say this one here you can see the type of load case is linear static for the first two cases equx linear and equy linear on uh, the type is linear static but for the response spectrum case the type is response spectrum specifically now the difference between these two is these two will be used for the linear static design case equivalent linear static method okay and these two case will be used for response spectrum method okay so let me show in the code where they mention this yeah here you can see at uh, clause 6.4.3 of is 1893 2016 what it is giving effects of design earthquake loads applied what structures can be considered in two ways okay namely equivalent static method and dynamic analysis method in term in turn dynamic analysis can be performed in three ways namely response spectrum method model time history analysis method and time history analysis method okay so in the dynamic analysis uh, we usually prefer this one response spectrum method because remaining to this a uh, time history analysis it is very lengthy procedure and uh, people use mostly for the research and uh, design of highly complex structure okay not for the regular structures for that response spectrum method is sufficient okay now see this equivalent static method is linear method and response spectrum method is dynamic method and in the last class also i have given a brief introduction about these two method in the equivalent static method we consider that the structure is only dominated by the fundamental period mean the means first mode period we consider only the response of that period that mode only only first mode okay the remaining modes uh, second third fourth or higher order modes we do not consider okay but in the response spectrum method we consider the higher modes also for example second mode third mode fifth mode uh, how many modes you want you can consider it explicitly okay and uh, the response spectrum method is preferred when the uh, structure is governed by the modes higher than first mode also for example second mode is dominating third mode is dominating fourth mode is dominating like that and this we can understand when we do not have the mode participation factor from the first mode uh, to at least 90% okay this we will see later on when we analyze the structure i'll show you this uh, mode participation factors and uh, you'll see for each mode how much participation factor is achieved okay there you can decide whether your analysis type is correct or not for example you preferred equivalent static method in etf and you analyze the structure okay and after analyzing you have checked the participation factor and you are seeing that uh, the participation factor for first mode is less than 90% so it means your uh, analysis type is not sufficient you have to go for the response spectrum method okay but suppose your analysis by that method is giving you the mode participation factor of more than 90% it means uh, that method equivalent static method is sufficient for that case okay so this is the difference 
so here we have considered both the cases we'll analyze the structure by both the method and we'll see the uh, difference okay by applying this method if you analyze how much participation factor is giving by analyzing this one how much participation factor is giving okay so this is just for your understanding but for design in actual cases you have to decide which method you have to select which method will be preferred that you have to decide okay based on the condition is it clear okay i show this one after analysis you will understand better so we have defined the load cases and uh, then load combination okay so by default i have defined not by default actually i have Excuse defined me, yes so what is difference between load case and load pattern load pattern actually similar but in load case uh, you have some other uh, advantage also for example some load type which is not in load pattern let me show in load pattern you basically define the loads which you can apply to the structure okay, okay. for example dead load live load and all similar thing kinds of load you uh, directly apply to the structure okay so that you define in load patterns but in load case some particular analysis type also for example this response spectrum this is actually analysis type specifically okay and uh, in addition to that if you want to do some nonlinear analysis for example you want to do time history analysis you want to do push over analysis all these things uh, analysis type you define in this case load case so here you can say if i want to uh, do the dynamic analysis using time history so you can say dynamic time history okay and you can choose the types time history here and you can give the inputs whatever input you have to give you, ha you can enter the inputs here and you can select so these things you have to define in load case only you cannot define all these things in the load terms sorry load patterns in the load patterns only the loads which is coming to the structure that will be defined okay okay sir okay so after defining the load cases then you have to define the load combinations already i have defined some combinations so this uh, takes a lot of time that's why i have defined already means i have taken from another model so i'll just show you briefly one or two cases you can understand for example this is 1.5 into dead load plus live load okay so you can just go to modify to check what is there inside so name you can enter here what name for that load case you can give 1.5 into dead load and live load and uh, here you can choose dead so dead load is chosen and factor is 1.5 then add then i have wall also coming under dead load right so this will be 1.5 and add after that slab load is also coming under dead load so this will be 1.5 then we have floor finish also in dead load 1.5 and then live load in live i have live floor and uh, live roof and point five and okay so this is dead load case similarly let me show one uh, seismic load case also so again the name you can give anything you want okay so this is better to give like this only it will be easy to understand otherwise if you give some other name it is difficult to identify which load case is which one okay so this is 1.5 into dead load plus earthquake in x direction plus 30% of earthquake in y direction plus 30% of earthquake in z direction okay so i think earthquake for z direction is not defined let me check yeah it is not defined so let me define earthquake in z direction also add new function and uh, So 
sorry it is defined already here or yes earth queue in z direction let me show what is there inside it is user defined actually damping ratio is 0.05 and uh, period is considered zero at zero period 0 0.06 so if you go to our is code uh, there it is uh, considered as two third of the response spectrum in the uh, x direction for the z earthquake uh, uh, load case i don't know where it is written let me find out that yeah here you can see the design uh, seismic acceleration spectral value av or vertical motion sh should be taken as two third of z by 2 into 2.5 so remaining things so this is there in uh, x direction load cases also only th difference is this one two third okay so it means the acceleration uh, in the z direction is two third of that of x direction okay so according to that one <clears throat> I have calculated the force, total force, not only the acceleration. Okay, so that I have entered here 0 0.06, and it is constant throughout the period. That's why at period 10 also it is 0 0.06. Okay, sir, we are not getting the, the jet direction automatically as you. No, no, it is not automatic. Define. I have defined. I have defined this one, not automatic. Define function. Yes. Add new function. It is user Change defined. Okay. ASC, no, actually. You have selected the American standard code. Okay. Sorry, ASC. Sorry, sorry. Add new mm -hmm. function. And uh, from where? Let us convert to user defined. Okay. Okay. So initially, some kind of uh, default values will be there. You just convert into uh, user defined. Okay. Then you can okay. edit here. So once you get to this point, then you can delete whichever you do not want. You can delete. Okay. Now you can edit. At okay. zero, it is point zero six zero point zero six. Uh, modify then add this 10 and uh, sorry 10 and this is 0 0.06 and modify and function name you can give t q z or whatever you want you can define okay okay then in the load combination as i was saying this one okay okay so according to this one how much is coming that value you can select the factor here okay so dead load is 1.5 into dead load so it will be 1.5 so similarly for uh, overload also sorry this is dead and add this is overload sorry this one is 1.5 Then this is slab load 1.5, then floor finish 1.5. All these things are coming in dead load, okay. And in this combination, there is no live load, so we will not uh, choose the live load, okay. Next, it will be earthquake load now see in earthquake you have two options now one is uh, response spectrum one is equivalent static so at this point you have to choose which analysis you are going to consider for example i am considering analysis by response spectrum method so i will choose this one R rsx which is response spectrum load case okay and here you see for y direction it is 1.5 okay and x direction it is 30 percent of that so 0.3 into 1.5 so you'll get 0 0.45 right and add and uh, y direction is 1.5 and z direction is here is equal z
Let me check why it is not coming. EQ said. Sir, actually, it is showing only the, the load load that are defined in the load case or load uh, pattern. Okay. So our uh, our uh, Z direction is not defined in load pattern or load case. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So here we can define this one, right? Response spectrum. Yeah, sorry. So I have to define one response spectrum Z case here. So RS Z spectrum at acceleration. So this will be U3 and this will be RS and Z or EQZ, whichever you have defined. Okay. And this factor again, once again, whatever values you have defined earlier and uh, whatever is missing, that will be here. Okay. So I'm not going to the explanation for this one. This is similar to that X and Y, Z, y direction only. Whatever is not considered, that will enter here. So now you will get, I think. Yeah, so RSZ and it will be again 0 0.45, 0 0.45. Okay, so in a similar fashion, you can define all the load combinations by referring from the code, whichever is given in the code that you can enter one by one here. Okay, so after defining the load combination, then uh, one more option remaining is this one mass source, one more important thing. So, modify already one default mass source is given so let us modify this one okay this mass source means it is considering the seismic weight uh, let me show what is that seismic weight this one this w while calculating the base shear uh, it uses uh, the seismic coefficient multiplied by the seismic weight okay so this seismic weight is defined in the mass source okay you can select the option whichever you want usually we go by this one specified by load patterns okay so here for dead load i consider full so this one means it is considering full this one is different from the uh, that what we have seen earlier in the load pattern okay do not compare this with that that one okay here the meaning of one is it is considering the full load okay then you can consider one loads it is also one then you can consider slab load this is also one you can consider flow finish also one then you can consider live load 0 0.5 okay now here you see 0 0.5 why i am taking in our is code it it has given when the live load is more than uh, 3 kilo newton per meter square the seismic weight factor is considered as 50 percent of the load okay i do not remember the clause number let me try where it is written
okay we'll see this uh, later on uh, i do not remember the clause number but it is written in the code if your uh, live load is less than 3 kN per meter square this factor will be 0.25 okay but suppose you have the live load more than 3 kN uh, per meter square then this factor will be 0.5 okay now let's see how much uh, we have live load okay live load is not given so let us consider 3.5 kN per meter square live load which is more than 3 kN okay so according to that one we will have the factor a 0.5 okay then for live roof again in code it is given uh, the live load of roof can be ignored because it is usually less than uh, 3 kN per meter square and mostly in the range of 1 or 0.5 okay so it do not matter if you ignore also so code specifically says that you can ignore so we will ignore that okay so this you remember dead load full participation and live load only 50 percent participation in the seismic weight okay then one last option is p delta okay this i'll explain later on this is again based on the load you have so many options none if you give it means software will not consider the p delta then non ITT based on mass then ITT based on load most preferred is this one ITT based on load and uh, this is again uh, this factor you have to define okay this is not given in our code IS code do not say about the p delta option but uh, in some uh, other code like uh, ASC code or some European codes they give this uh, load combination also for p delta okay so one of the combination is 1.2 into dead load plus 0.5 into live load okay so according to that one i will define this Okay, so I think we have considered all the things that load we have considered that wall slab floor finish and uh, live load. Okay, so this is for P delta load case. Now we have defined all the basics what we needed for this modeling and uh, now directly we can go to the load definition, sorry assigning the loads. Okay, so let me quickly show one or two load assignment first let me assign the uh, wall loads okay that is easy to assign i'll select all the stories then go to plan and uh, starts from first story okay so before that So let us consider we have this building. Usually, uh, this is column and these are the beams or beam level. Okay, I'm considering. So here you have walls. Basically, you have wall in between two floors. Okay. So if this is the floor, this is another floor. So in between you'll have wall. Here also you'll have wall. Here also you'll have. Here also you'll have. But at this level, at ground level. Sorry, this is below ground level. This is the ground level you consider or plinth level you can say. So below plinth you do not have any wall. Okay. And uh, above the roof level what you have you have small parapet. The height of parapet is usually 0 0.75 to 1 meter. So we will not consider this as a wall. We will assign it separately. But all the other floors have the similar wall. Okay, so that we'll consider now. We'll consider from story one to story nine have the similar kinds of wall, means the thickness of all the walls will be same. Okay, and uh, below story one plinth we have, but at the plinth level we do not have any wall. Okay, so we'll not assign the wall here. 
and uh, above that one what we have so this this one will skip okay we do not have any wall here we have wall here we have wall here we have wall here now consider the thickness of wall i think given brick wall thickness is 300 mm so can you tell me in running meter how much load will be applied for 300 mm thickness anyone consider the thickness of uh, brick is 20 kN per meter square Twenty kilonewton per meter square is the unit weight of. Sorry, twenty kilonewton per meter cube. This is the unit weight of. According to that one, calculate per meter length how much load we'll have. anyone so this thickness is 300 mm or you can say 0.3 meter i am asking in this direction per meter how much load you will have considering height between the stories you have height is 3 meter so from that so here to here it is 3 meter okay but here you have the depth of beam also this depth of beam is 0.45 so you have to deduct that 0.45 from 3 so what you'll have uh, sorry 2.55 this will be the effective height of the wall okay so consider this effective height 2.55 and let me know how much wall weight you have in this direction per meter length so 15.3 how did 15 you calculate so length into thickness into 20 is it this one yes sir so how much you are getting 15.3 15.3 okay now you have to remember one thing see here i have 0.45 of depth of beam okay but when it changes that time this depth will change so this you have to keep in mind okay wherever you have some different uh, height or uh, depth of the beam section while finding this value you have to consider that beam depth okay remember that one so now we have uh, uh, 450 mm depth in all the cases so we have the constant value of 15.3 okay so what you can do go to plant select at uh, this level okay uh, this is also important tell me whether this beam will have any uh, wall load or not this beam wall usually starts from above the plinth level means uh, the ground story also have some walls here so this load will be transferred to this beam but below that immediately below that soil will be there okay so this wall will not affect the beam here 
but anyway we do not have any the soil any soil modeling here so we'll go by modeling the wall load here also okay ignore that whether soil is there or not in this case our uh, support starts from this point it means we do not have any support here okay so in this case we'll consider that also we we'll start a uh, wall load from this level okay so go to plan starts from the plinth level beam apply and you have 15.3 throughout this one same value okay so what you can do go to all story selection and uh, select all the beams not columns so here you do not drag if you drag the columns will also be selected okay so do not go by that option uh, you can select individually only beams or if you drag also drag only to the beams not columns okay then go to the again change this all story to one story and go to the top story this one story 10 apply and see here it should be one story because we do not have the wall load at the top story so i'll unselect all this okay so this you can just keep the cursor and click okay i'm just keeping the cursor on the beams and clicking it okay so that you can unselect okay so i have unselected all the beams and now go to assign and uh, frame loads distributed load and here you select which type of load you want to assign here it is wall load and uh, this option you have to use okay it is 15.3 kN per meter and see this option is for another case this will discuss when it is coming then after entering this one apply okay i think now you can see in 3d view see i think at the top also for one beam it is applied i missed that one while i'm selecting okay no issue you can uh, again go to this and you can unassign this one once again no problem okay but for remaining stories you can see for all the beams again i missed in y direction only in x direction it is considered but in y direction it is not considered here you can see only along this direction only along this direction it is defined but in this direction it is not defined so in a similar way you can just select the beams and go to assign option and uh, frame loads and distributed and you assign here okay so this you can do today we will stop at this point Uh, up to dead load you try uh, means uh, whatever i have not defined here that uh, dead load in some of the beams you have not defined so that you can complete and in a similar way try to define the other loads also for example uh, uh, floor finish then live load and uh, then uh, this one slab load although i have not explained just try it yourself whether you can do or not but if you do not do also don't worry next class we'll discuss from this point okay
wherever we are stopping at this point we'll discuss from this point only in the next discussion okay so we'll uh, stop at this point today if you have any doubt so far you can tell me sir after the processing the whatever you have done give me some time to implement in our this our file also sir it's too uh, fast sir. actually we can't we can't okay, implement it in our file actually give some time for the implementation after okay, the under okay, sorry, understanding sorry. okay sorry 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 so this is one good suggestion okay i understand i am doing it fast so you are not getting enough time to implement along with me right yes sir okay so yeah so you try and uh, i'll uh, share this record what i have and this software actually not working it is trial version so it is recording only 10 minutes at a time okay so i'll fix this issue from the next class we'll have full record in a single file so that you can refer this also you can refer but let me let me first verify whether all the details are there in that videos or not okay if it is working fine then i'll share all the uh, videos along uh, videos with you you can refer and you can try okay but uh, that is not a foundation that you have to complete this for what we have explained you can just try how much you can you can do and uh, if you miss anything you can call me anytime or you can post in the chat group whatsapp chat group we'll clarify there also and uh, still if you have doubt again we are there in the next class to discuss right so don't worry 